There is a legend when we talk about the pigskin. I do mean a legend. And that legend talk with our own legend, KSHB 41 Sports reporter Mackenzie wow. Nelson. Mac. <laughs> Hey, Kevin, that's right. If you didn't know, Bill Snyder went to the University of Missouri and played football. Well, sort of. Okay, follow me here. He was the eighth string quarterback for the freshman team because, yes, back then they did have freshman football teams. But what you'll learn from this story is what he never accomplished as a player, he did as a coach. His coaching career at Kansas State is legendary, but it almost didn't happen. After several moves, Bill Snyder made his way to the University of Iowa, where he vowed to stay. When I got to Iowa, I said, no more. We've moved around. I've moved my family around. Uh, I, I'm going to stay right here. Despite several attempts and offers from teams around the country, including K-State, Snyder was set in his decision. But Steve Miller, the K-State athletic director at the time, was not satisfied. And he kept calling, kept calling. After the football season, Snyder went to Manhattan and picked a spot on the campus to stop and ask people about the culture. They were all so very gracious. And they obviously were representative of the people of the university. And I think this has the, the opportunity for the greatest turnaround in college football exists here today. In 1988, Snyder left Iowa and became the head football coach at K-State, inheriting the worst program in the country. The Wildcats were the only team to have lost over 500 games in history. They said, you know, Manhattan is kind of a, uh, uh, a party town. And we have this area called Aggieville right offside the campus where everybody goes and has a good time. He said, you know, none of us go because we're too embarrassed. Snyder and the Wildcats got to work. With a lot on his plate, Coach even went to a hypnotist in hopes hypnosis could keep him from needing some shut-eye. A professional told me was, that won't work. <laughs> you, cannot, <laughs> you cannot do that. That will not, not help you one bit. So it, it was short-lived. In his first season, the Wildcats finished 1-10. in ten. Primary objective was that each and every young guy in our program would become better every single day of his life as a person, as a student, and as By 1995, Snyder led K-State to their first 10-win season in history, reaching many more milestones along the way before retiring for the first time in 2005. After four years of retirement, Snyder returned as head coach, retiring for a second time in 2018. Still living in Manhattan, Snyder says he keeps his distance from the program, but attend games at his namesake stadium. Well, I talk to a lot of coaches around the country uh, on, a, on a very frequent basis. Uh, and my best encouragement to all of them is just, you know, do what you think is best. With a career full of achievements, it's the little things that mean the most to coach. I have a, a storage room full of boxes that are full of nothing but letters cards and letters, and a large number of them are from ex-players, and I, and I cherish them, mm -hmm. and they, you know, the, the jest virtually of each and every one of them, although said in different ways, is, you know, coach, I didn't really get it then, but I sure get it now. As for his legacy, only one thing matters to him. I just always wanted to do, you know, what would, uh, Make my mother happy. Twenty-two years young, Coach Snyder said he still has it in him to be a head coach, but he said to me, quote, nobody wants to hire an 82-year-old as their head football coach. Live outside the T-Mobile Center, I'm Mackenzie Nelson, KSHB 41 Sports.